welcome everybody to the React Native podcast show, show podcast, coffee talk, whatever, guys. Um, today we are meeting again, and this is a coffee talk. And so I have my coffee with me. If you don't have yours, this is the time to grab it. Um, we have a really, really exciting topic today and a really exciting guest. Um, Tiago is with us and we will talk about Web3 in a React Native domain specifically. Um, so, Tiago, uh, I know you, Coldstuckers know you, but maybe people who are listening to us, they don't know you at all. So why don't you just introduce yourself? Okay, hi everyone, uh, my name is Tiago. Uh, basically, I've been working with React Native uh, for quite some time, uh, 2017 or maybe a little bit earlier, I guess. Uh, in the meantime, I mean, for the last, maybe two, three years, I had like a, a little break from it, like work related, but then now at Costack, I'm back doing what I love. So that's amazing. Yes, it is super amazing. And I love, you know, I love listening to people who are talking about stuff they love. So I'm really excited about this. <laughs> yeah. Um, great, great. So Tiago, we are here to talk about Web3. And there is a reason for that. Uh, it's not that, oh my God, Web3 is coming. No, it's already here, guys. So chill out, right? It's been with us for some time now, but but there's still a lot of things to do in Web3 uh, mobile section. Um, but we feel, before we get to these details, uh, Tiago, when and how and why did you even get into Web3? Like, w what was your drive? Yeah. I mean, people usually get into Web3 because of crypto, and that was my case also. For example, I think I started looking at it in 2018 or 19. Uh, so I'm, I'm originally from Brazil, and where I was in Brazil at the time, when I, I remember trying to like creating an account uh, in, a, in an exchange and to try to buy some Bitcoin, for example, and I couldn't because like the the exchange didn't uh, operate in, in Brazil at the time. So that's how I tried. Then because of this, I kind of got the, like demotivated uh, naturally uh, and spent like maybe a few months, um, just forgot about it, right? And then for example, the all the bull market from the pandemic came in like all, the, all through the roof. And then, okay, maybe I should look at it again because not only money related, but I really liked the, the tech uh, concepts and stuff like that. So I think that's that's what brought me into this, uh, basically. And then after that, I, I started looking more into development uh, with Web3 itself. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And and by that time, like when the when the COVID hit and the boom on, on the NFT market and in general Web3, uh, hit. Were you there in Brazil or you were not in Brazil anymore back then? No, I was. I was in Brazil. Okay. Uh, yeah, I live in Portugal now, but I'm only here for like uh, one year and something. So Okay. Yeah. So I guess by then, uh, like the, the Web3 uh, in Brazil was also like developing. The, the, the exchange market you were talking about was already uh, like developed so that you could actually create an account and get into this stuff or did you look for some workarounds? No, no, it was like, it, it was perfectly fine. Maybe it was just the one that I chose like in, in this, uh, early, early days, uh, the one that I knew of and chose, uh, wasn't operating. Maybe if I knew one that was operating, I could have, uh, done it easier now. Yeah. I mean, if it's a new topic, you can easily get discouraged if you just find wrong solutions and wrong resources. Right. So who yeah. knows? Who knows? Yeah. Um, nice, nice. But, but what about you? Like, I, I, I mean, I was actually about to say that I got into Web3 stuff around the same time, maybe maybe a little later, because I did actually start getting interested in that when COVID hit, because as everyone probably, I was just bored. <laughs> I was just, you know, roaming around the internet, uh, looking for stuff to do, because I have I was bored with everything already by then. And I remember um, I, oh, one specific project that brought me really into the Web3 space was a Polish NFT project. It's still out there, by the way. It was called, it is called Fancy Burst. 
And I remember there was a big hype on it. And my friend, very close friend, he was like super into it. Like he was, dude, you need to meet these people from this, this community. They're so cool. They're going to build the metaverse. They're having a nice burst on their avatars and shit. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> That sounds fun. Why not? Let let me jump into it. And my friend was non-technical person, so he was really excited about the economics, about the investment, about the the idea of of metaverse and living inside of a cyber world, you know. And yeah, yeah. I was more like, wait, so w what's so cool about it? I mean, you're selling pictures. What's then? And then I got into the details and I was trying to understand all this, but I don't have much experience building um, specifically mobile apps in Web three. I did take part in um, NFT project. It failed. Let's not talk about it. But uh, I that was my my technical input in Web three. Um, I I remember building like NFT generator. I remember working with uh, some basic smart contracts to put it on a on a chain and and make it NFT. Um, working with the centralized um, database. Uh, don't remember the name right now. It's like the one of the most popular ones. Maybe you're talking about uh, IPFS or oh, yeah, IPFS exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm, so yeah, that's that's how I got into this stuff. And nowadays, I don't I don't really do that uh, anymore. I'm I'm working on my side project, and I want it to be Web three app. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, so so you are the person to enlighten me today and our listeners. Um, by the way. If any one of you is is watching us on YouTube and you have some nice story how you got into Web3, maybe you have a success story behind your project. <laughs> maybe you have a great failure story that you would like to share. Like uh, us. Yeah, like us. Uh, then go ahead and drop a comment. Let's 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 hear those stories. I'm really, really curious about it because I love inspiring stories, as I mentioned before. Um so did you actually work in like a uh, Web3 project after all? Yeah. So la last year, last year, I'm not exactly, yeah, 2022. And maybe I started on 2021. So don't, okay. don't mind the year. So yeah, I, I worked with uh, Futures Factory. So shout out to my friends at Futures Factory if you're watching this. Uh, it up. was a very cool experience. And actually my first uh, professional one uh, actually building in Web3. Mm -hmm. uh, they're basically uh, a company that they tries to to bridge the digital and physical worlds with with uh, NFTs, for example, uh, more fashion related and more specifically uh, with sneakers. So we did a lot of cool stuff. But the the project I worked on more uh, was actually building an NFT collection with this like it's a profile picture uh, collection. Really? And but with these aspects of fashion, like uh, fashion uh, clothing and accessories, stuff like that, uh, and it was super cool because we got to build it from from the ground up. Uh, for example, I'm telling not only smart contracts, not on, not only the front end, but I, I participated in the process of like creating the models, like generating and randomizing uh, the this uh, the the assets, the layers mm -hmm. of, of the stuff. Like the hosting on, part. yeah, a little bit. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm, I was not responsible for the amazing creative work that was there, but I could understand how it was done and like try to try to help in my way. Nice. Uh, so yeah, it was super cool because it was uh, it, it it involved all parts of the process. You know, like the the creative uh, hosting on a decentralized uh, way, and then interacting with the smart contracts. Uh, pulling into in the front end stuff like that all right all right that's that's really cool um but did the project work out after all yeah yeah they, they launched uh I, I wasn't there anymore when when they launched but they had a successful launch and it was uh amazing to, to, to see it finally uh yeah they are they are very grateful that they got you probably <laughs> I, ho I hope so <laughs> Uh, all right, all right. Yeah, again, shout out to shout out to these people. Uh, without you, people, uh, Tiago wouldn't be here with me probably. So, good job, good job. Um, so you were working on that project. Um, you got interested before that. You are into this space for a while now. What's cool about it? Let let let's just tackle this. What's cool about Web three at this at this 
stage, right? At this time, because it changed a lot since the buzz, which was like two, three years ago, as you mentioned. What's cool about it? Well, I'm still going to say, I, I think what's cool and what's most important, uh, it's the ways we change how we interact with uh, money. I'm, I'm not saying like I, I want to make easy money, but alternatives to, to the traditional uh, money banking system. I think that's what holds the most value, I guess. Uh, so for example, when you go to, to DeFi, decentralized finance, you have a lot of ways where you can, for example, you can be the money provider and actually gain interest in that instead of just uh, like putting your money in the bank and having like super low yields uh, on that, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, what does it mean that you can be a money provider? What, what do you mean by this? Yeah, like in, there, there's a common con concept in, in DeFi where, that you call like liquidity pools. Basically, for example, if you want, if you go to a decentralized exchange and you want to change, for example, uh, the dollar or the euro for Ethereum, let's say, uh, like there's the, there needs to be liquid, liquidity in, the, in both sides. For example, you need to, get your dollar to, to the pool of, uh, of money and you need to take back uh, Ethereum, for example. And to form these liquidity pools, people need to participate in that. So basically, I, I need to have both facts. I need to have both assets and put those in the pool. I have like a certificate, uh, a token that proves that I'm the owner of 0.00% of the pool. And I can participate in the yields that this generate, like the 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 profits uh, of holding that you know so All right yeah th that's not a new concept but i i still think it's one of the most uh, important ones mm -hmm. all right so d5 um what is really interesting um to me personally because i'm uh i'm a little geeky by myself is the game fi uh which is uh how can we explain this it? like gaming finances well, yeah, the, the term, I'm not exactly what it means, uh, to be I've honest. Never I, actually, I've never seen the full full um, full name of it. I'm just yeah, trying to... Yeah, I, I think at, at this point, we're just putting phi at, yes. at the end of the, the words, and it kind of means uh, something decentralized or stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, but there is, there is this concept of, of like decentralized gaming that also allows you to like earn coins um that's one thing it allows you to exchange coins for for example nfts right so if you got games like i suppose like fortnite for example in which you you can have skins and stuff like that that skin would be your nft that you could hold and you could be an, an owner of and maybe you could exchange it between games if if they are on the same chain or something like that i'm just trying to guess now but um it it is showing so much potential of growing, especially with like a concept of open world gaming and stuff like that. It gives you so much um, to play with, basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's basically like that. So one thing people are always mentioning, for example, if you take Counter-Strike, the, the market of uh, those gun skins are is already huge and already moves on like tons of money. And people say like, imagine if this was on chain. Like you could you could take this skin from CSGO and get into the the new Counter Strike or even into other games. Uh, that kind of that's kind of the possibilities that this opens, and I'm sure there there's a lot of more there that I don't know of. Uh, but yeah, you you talked about Fortnite. Uh, I, I know Nike is doing uh, stuff uh, in this in this uh, area, so they have also this uh, uh, dot swoosh project that is basically sneaker. NFTs and they're trying to 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 connect with uh, big brands. Uh, I think there was like something with Fortnite uh, some some months ago, and maybe some partnerships with EA Games, uh, like try to bring this to EA FC or Madden or right some some of these uh, chain of games. Yeah, when we are talking about Web three and Fortnite, one thing that that comes to my head is that um, when there was a big buzz ab around metaverses. All right, and and uh, that all the companies wanted to have their own metaverse and stuff like that. I remember that for uh, Fortnite, it was not 
building a metaverse, but they hosted like, I think two live concerts. Uh, one was of Ariana Grande, if I remember correct. And the other one, I, yeah. I'm not sure. Mar I remember Marshmallow. Oh, Marshmallow. The, yeah, the maybe. DJ. And yeah. I'm, sh I'm sure there was, I'm not, I think this was live. Yeah. I remember was like a Travis yeah. Scott concert also, but I'm not sure if it was live. I th yeah, maybe. But anyway, it is just, I think these were like those baby steps into this metaverse concept from Fortnite. But I think we all know that metaverse was not very successful idea. And nowadays it's pretty much dead. Um, yeah, it, it, it's weird. Like, I, to be honest, I don't fully know what people mean by metaverse because you kind of already had that in this game since like a lot of years ago. So I understand the the like the bad uh, side of like when you the, the polemic the polemic of uh when you talk about metaverse and yeah i think i think the the metaverse idea was to take those games as you as you're saying and just pushing them forward a few steps like right so you don't only meet people there you don't only collect items that help you go through the game you can also have a freaking nine to five job there <laughs> you know you can yeah. work you can be meeting people. You can go to see the art gallery there. That is like a proper art gallery, uh, but it's online, right? And and you you are either watching the screen or you're having a goggles and you're just walking around there and um, living your best life. Yeah, yeah. Um, or hoping for. Yeah, or hoping for. I think I think if the pandemic uh, would be up till now, hopefully not. Please don't. <laughs> but if it was uh, the case, maybe then the metaverse would take completely different uh, direction because that would be the place where we can meet online, for example, uh, with other yeah. people that we cannot meet, you know, face to face because of the pandemic uh, restrictions and stuff like that. But because uh, thankfully it did, um, it did uh, maybe not go away, but it, 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 it's, it is now among us and we live with it. Um, yeah things got back to normal uh, and maybe metaverse was just too late or too early. I don't know. Um, all right. Uh, but at the same time, when we are talking about the cool things, there are also not so cool things. There are downsides of Web3 and I think they come mostly from like misusing or misunderstanding of the concept or overusing the concept on your own um, advantage, right? So. What, what, what kinds of down, downsides of Web3 we can see nowadays, what do you think? Well, I can understand the, why a lot of people don't like it. Because when you start talking about it, it if, you, if you can't see the future potential, uh, you, you won't understand it or you won't give uh, proper value, I guess. Um, and then plus, uh, in addition to that, like you, you have all these scams going on. Like for example, my email, I, I still get tons of trash email scams, like to, to, to my personal email, which is very, like, even for me, it's very tiring. So imagine if someone is, is already not interested and they keep getting these emails or on Twitter, you post something, then the same second, like a bot, a crypto scam bot uh, replies, and now you have to report this. Now, you, like, it's just some extra work. Uh, uh, yeah. You, you need to do on something you're not interested. Uh, but this is really interesting what you just said. It, it, like, you compared those scams to the, to the email scams, right? And I was like, you know what? Like, Probably when Web2 started to become a thing and we started to use emails more extensively and we were just sending them everywhere to everyone all the time, people probably, when the first email scam popped into their inbox, they were like, oh, that's fine. You know, some Nigerian prince wants to give me money. Why not? <laughs> like, just give him all my details. And, and now you're like, Oh, some some dude wants to give me like free coins uh, just for joining his Discord. Yeah, for sure, let's go for it, right? So, it's basically the same thing, in different way, and we all need to get used to it, right? Again, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the, there is like ways to filter, like uh, to get better, but I it's gonna be very difficult to to end it, like one hundred percent, I guess. 
And if you want to be really good at avoiding these, uh, you can do what I do. You just ignore all the messages you receive. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you just need to to start from the premise that there there's no free lunch, like there's no free money, like no one would be ever giving you free stuff uh, out yeah. of their will without knowing you or anything. So if you if you know that you will always consider any link or stuff like a, a dangerous message. But what do you mean there's no free money? This this 12 year old became a millionaire because he did that. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, just yeah. kidding. Right place at the right time. Yeah, we all heard these stories, right? <laughs> Why am I not that 12 year old? Come on. What went wrong? Um, Matt, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be where I am right now. We can have these lovely conversations. I mean, come on. Ah, so scammers, 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 scammers. It's everywhere. It's always the downside of every new technology uh, that we just figure it out comparing to Web2, right? And we will not get rid of them. We can try to avoid them. We can learn how to avoid them and how to recognize them, but we will not get rid of them. So let's let's just let's just get on with it. I mean, come on. They, this is kind of a job as well, right? Everybody has to do some kind of job. <laughs> yeah. Um, how about how about like if I want to get into Web three? Um, and I was at that point. I remember what I was really pissed off about is how difficult it is to understand everything. How difficult it is to connect all the dots, like um, you know, the the industry with the with the vocabulary, with the technology, and I have to like connect all these dots to just to understand how I don't know Ethereum transaction works, right? And that's like basic thing, <laughs> but I need more basic things to understand it. So I would say that could be one of uh, downsides of Web three. But again, every new technology comes with it, so I don't know. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of work to be done in terms of education and and people people know that like I think that the biggest uh, challenge to solve is making Web three like easy to use, just like everyday Web two applications. I say, and people know that, and things are starting to be addressed. Like slowly, things are starting to to be figured out, and. Um... For everyone listening and watching to this, the guy I'm talking to right now is the guy who's actually trying to fix these issues. And I guess you can follow him on Twitter or X right now uh, to gain some knowledge. Tiago is sharing uh, his findings and and cool things on his Twitter. So um, yeah, if, you, if you're if you interested, go ahead and follow that guy. 20% um, to me. All right. Uh, so... What else? What else? Uh, do you see anything else uh, when it comes to downsides? Anything else that can discourage newcomers? Or um, or you think it's everything is more generic now? Yeah, it. I, I think in general, it, it's, it's hard to get started. Uh, but once you get, once you start seeing these common concepts uh, in different chains, in, in different... Uh, applications or areas uh, within Web3, you, you start to, to see some uh, common points on how they work and you actually get like, okay, how I need to send this transaction. I need to wait for it to confirm, like to be validated across uh, five, 10 validators. And then, okay, now it's, it's a proof that this was a success or something like that. And there are this, there's a lot of common concepts shared between all these chains and stuff like that. So, but I would say an easy entry point, if you don't want to, for example, you don't need to, to get into smart contract stuff, stuff like that. Like an easy entry point would be like, just if you're a front end developer or maybe full stack developer that is training right now, training back, uh, you basically, you don't need to, to, to know about the smart contract stuff and you can focus on your front end and how to connect, how to consume or or modify this data that is in the blockchain, you know? And that's basically what we're uh, focusing now uh, on my work here at Calstack and basically with the focus on on uh, React Native, how to do this in a good way uh, with React Native, you know? Nice, nice. So um, I think I would say, let's let's just assume that Web3 in like a mainstream is with us for like three years now. Uh, maybe four, maybe four, let's say four. Um, it's been four years. We we all know that in technology, four years is like forever. 
right? So many new things are coming every week that uh, after four years, I would expect Web3 tech, um, like the whole stack, tech stack of Web3 to work with web, will work with mobile. It should be all figured out, right? Four years. I mean, come on. So why do you think we got all this? Why do you think your current work is needed? Like, why do you think we, you have to do this? Well, I would say, for example, the web ecosystem, uh, uh, let, let's generalize a little bit so I can talk about uh, every ecosystem, but let's generalize, uh, generalize a little bit about Ethereum that is like the, the most used and developed uh, nowadays. Sure. I would say the, the Ethereum, ex Ethereum ecosystem on the web is somewhat mature because you have a lot of different tools. Uh, you have this self-sustaining ecosystem that if we don't have any, if we don't have something right now, there's the resources to, to go and build it, uh, some, some way, you know, but all these tools with what we did almost always built with, uh, the web in mind. Uh, that's why there are so many uh, web APIs being used. For example, uh, a lot of tools were built with these browser extension wallets in mind. So, and these browsers extensions, they usually ex their primary way of exposing in APIs is through like window.ethereum. So, this is something that already breaks when you come to to React Native, you know. So, since right. the yeah, so the, the, I, I consider the 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 web ecosystem kind of mature. But when you come to React Native, you face a lot of these problems, uh, which is natural. Like it, React Native were, was made on top of the web, so it's natural that we need to polyfill some web APIs, uh, stuff like that. But it's kind of the the main problem. Uh, it's, it, it just need it just need a little focus, like a, a little love to to get it working, you know, fully. Right. Uh, I'm, mm, I'm a little bit surprised because I know that the mobile market is huge and so many businesses are built around mobile first and uh, web is basically like an extension. And here you can see that it's kind of a different way, right? Is it that like finance or crypto in general is more web-based? Like, is it less popular to use mobile apps for stuff related to crypto and finance than it is on web. I'm just curious, you know, I'm just wondering. Yeah, I think people will have different opinions. I know people that only only use this kind of stuff on smartphones with uh, smartphone wallets and stuff. But at least on my vision, at least me, I'm kind of the opposite. Like wh whenever I'm doing some crypto stuff, I'm on my like desktop. So it, it depends, I would say, but but it, yeah, but but it's it's growing. But for, like, what we see is that a lot of these decentralized apps or or wallets, they have great web versions. And when you try to look for an app, you don't find it, and you find that usually it's just a good enough, uh, responsive version you get on your phone, or <laughs> React Native apps with rendering web views. Uh, to, so you don't have to to work around the polyfills, you know. Uh, yes, yes. The, so the that's lovely... the, the saddest for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the the lovely solution we all we all React Native developers love to see in the code, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yeah. Love you. Let's go with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, but that that kind of that kind of explains why there might be a lack of maturity in tooling around mobile web three development stack. Let's call it like this. Um, you just mentioned some people are just building React Native apps using web views. So they are really building a web app that is going to be displayed within your mobile, to be honest. So they are, again, using web tools. Yeah. And they I... don't need to just build a mobile tool properly. Yeah, and it's understandable because they probably tried to to, to build an, an app before, and they stumbled across a, a series of problems with these polyfills. Like there are SDKs of wallets you you want to integrate that is just super scary when you try to install it because like 
oh, you need to install this 10 polyfills and then we're gonna add this script that is gonna go inside your node modules and change a few things, but don't worry, it, it's secure. Yeah. <laughs> Trust so, me, I'm an engineer, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's basically one of the things uh, we're working on. Uh, trying to make these things easier, you know, like and, and less scary to, to, to build something with uh, Web3 and React Native. And, and you've already published something, right? There, there's something that is already publicly available to check out. Yeah, yeah. So last week or the other, we published a, a blog post, uh, basically a tutorial on how to build modern Web3 dApps uh, on Ethereum with React Native. Uh, using mo more modern tools uh, without all, all of these uh, scary polyfills. Uh, and I think it's it's a good starting point um, like to help educate in, in that manner. All right, cool. So um, if, you know, just, just, just guessing, if some of our listeners are just lazy enough so that they don't want to read that blog post, they, they prefer to watch this and listen to this, and they're like, so Diego, um, how to build a Web3 app <laughs> with React Native. Um, just give us some introduction here. Well, uh, maybe we can break in like three steps. Uh, first, to, like, to, to interact with the blockchain, you need to choose one of the low-level libraries uh, to interact with the blockchain. Um, you may have heard there's two very classic uh, ones, which is Web3.js and Ethers.js. They're were, they're both uh, used a lot, uh, very famous and one of the classic old ones. Uh, but they, they had their problems, uh, scalability, performance, uh, bundle size, all that good stuff we, we already know. Yeah. Uh, and what I like to... Like, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I'm just uh, curious. Aren't, are they like limited to chains or to networks that you can connect with, or are they flexible enough that you can connect to any chain? Uh, they are. Uh, Ethers.js is focused on, on Ethereum. Uh, Web3.js I never use, but I might be talking uh, wrong right here and now, but I guess it, you can interact with other chains on it. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. If, if, if any one of you has some some details on that, just drop a comment, but we could also uh, send people to the docs, right? So, uh, <laughs> all right, all right. So uh, we need these first. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, th those two are classic ones. They're a little bit uh, more difficult to set up. What I would recommend today is VM, uh, a library by the Wagmi team, which is another tool we can talk about later. Uh, let's, we let's, let's spell it. It's V-I-E-M, not the V-M, and not yeah, the yeah. Vim as an editor. It's V-I-E-M. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I never heard anyone talking about it like in a podcast before, so maybe I'm talking, it, uh, spelling it wrong. Well, oh, setting I standards I... right now. Guys, this is how you pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's probably not, probably not. <laughs> but yeah, this, this library is basically um, a modern JavaScript way of doing these uh, things, addressing these uh, issues uh, we, I mentioned before. And like the, the purpose is to talk to the blockchain. And we do that basically sending um, our RPC requests, like JSON RPC requests to, our, to an RPC server that is running a blockchain node and can actually uh, query and mutate data in the blockchain. So it's a it's an JSON RPC call to a server that is actually running a blockchain node. And it, this server do the blockchain operation and returns to, to us. That's basically what it does. With an so, ICE API, of course, mm -hmm. over so the JSON RPC like, protocol. Yeah. So from like a front-end developer point of view, it seems like working with just some kind of like REST API or, yeah. or other kind of API, it doesn't change much from like a front-end developer point of view. You just send a request, you receive some results, uh, some response. and um, But I think the sauce is about what you send and what you get, right? Yeah, that, that's the whole point of what I said before. Like that, that's why it's not scary if you start from the front end because it's 90, 95% what you already do. Uh, you, yeah. you just need to, to understand the concepts of, okay, I need to do this. First of all, I, I, I'm not logging in with uh, my email and password. I'm gonna, I'm gonna log in with my wallet, my wallet address, you know? So that's why it's, it's very similar and it's, uh, 
easy to start for a web developer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the first point. You need a low level library to interact with the blockchain. And to be honest, you can do everything with it. Like you can use it to connect your wallet. You can use it uh, to build your entire application. But we always like higher abstractions to facilitate our life. And I would say you should always, uh, you should also look for uh, a way to connect your wallet. So there, there are plenty of uh, connect kits uh, that provides you a nice UI that you click a button. Yeah, uh, a model opens with a lot of wallet options and you select one and boom, you're connected, you know? Oh, so it's not like, like one of these packages that you just mentioned, they don't connect you to the wallet. They are just to talk to the blockchain, but connecting to the wallet is like a completely separate part. They do. Uh, you need to, you need some adapters depending on the wallet you're using. So for example, if you're using one of the, these low level libraries and in your application, you want to offer, okay, I want to offer 10 wallets that people are going to be able to connect the 10 most popular wallets I think they are. So you're going to have to write, write 10 adapters to, to these wallets and to make it, to make them all work. So that's when, that's the beauty of these connected, connect kits, uh, for example, uh, Wallet Connect, they had a, a, some like nice UI to do that. And you just installed their, their SDK and you have a model with hundreds of wallets. You abstract it for you and it's way easier to, to do it like that, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I can imagine these, all these packages, all these SDKs, they come with like custom hooks probably, right? That you operate with, uh, yeah. and components like providers or does it work different way? Yeah. So the, not the low level library. Uh, but then we comes to, to my third point, you probably want a, a nice library of hooks and the, the most famous one is, uh, Wagme, uh, and they, they are actually the, the creators of VM for the same reason, the, the issues we, we talked about, and it's just amazing. Like you have these easy to use hooks, you call it from anywhere and they're just the most straightforward thing you can, you can think of. Like you want to read your balance, use balance. You okay. want to read your address, use account, you know? So I think those are the three, three main points if you want to get started. And it's not, it's not hard at all, especially on web. When, when you come to React Native, uh, we're fixing that, trying to fix that. In progress, in progress. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. So it. I would say if you want to, if, if it, these are just like your very, very first steps in Web3, I would say just give it a go with React on Web because you will not be, um, you will not be affected by those issues that you, Tiago, just mentioned that um, maybe that the experience is not there yet and, and stuff like that. If you go with React, you, you, you might expect nice experience uh, to learn, to build your first app, to do, do the stuff. And then when you are ready, jump into React Native, uh, help Tiago building solutions. Um, they're going to be open source, so for sure. Um, and that will be awesome. So would you say, can we, let's, let's put the baseline of where, what we have to build to name our app, the Web3 app. Is it connecting to the wallet? Is it enough? Or would you say that's, that's not enough? We need something else. Yeah, like if you say, I want a Web3, app, I, I would say like, if you can connect a wallet and read some stuff from the blockchain, I think it's there already. But if you want to go into the terms of like a decentralized app, then it's a whole other story. Uh, there's a lot of maximalists around decentralization that will probably kill me if I, if I say anything. So <laughs> yeah, it's one of those, uh, polemic, po po polemic topics, uh, <laughs> But yeah, okay. I just just don't stick to I just don't stick to to these terms and just do whatever your your app needs. So basically, if you build an app that allows you to connect to the wallet, you are allowed to update your LinkedIn profile. If you build an app that does that plus is sending transactions, you can start tweeting about it. <laughs> yeah, then then you're senior. <laughs> then you're senior, and then you are ready to receive those job offers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, all right. So I guess we, we have a nice, nice little manual on how to get started with Web3. We have some nice ups and downs of Web3 in the current state. 
Um, and uh, we are calling for people to get interested and uh, start building great mobile tools for Web3 because this is going to be important very soon. Um, I guess I guess that that should be it. Uh, my coffee is is done. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, the, my cup is empty. Actually, there's one more thing that is interesting. Uh, we're working on yeah. is basically trying to get all of these goodies and get into like cross-platform apps. I think it's starting to become more easy now, um, especially with some new SDKs from from the Wallet Connect team. We can now have these render equivalent experiences on web and mobile. Uh, all in the same code base, like true Expo, React Native Web, and that's actually that's actually what we're working on right now. Like trying to to build a POC, maybe a, a tutorial, a guideline how to how to do it. And we expect that this should be super. Uh, how do you say, compelling, compelling for teams to start building this way instead of going for the web view for the responsive web app. So. Expect some expect some things from us regarding Web3 cross, cross-platform dApps in React Native soon. That would that's be awesome. probably a good thing to mention. Yeah, yeah, that's that's coming back to roots, right? I mean, uh, back in the days, I would say React Native is a cross-platform technology. I mean, it allows us to build cross-platform apps. Nowadays, probably it's very vague vocabulary to use. It's, it's much more than this. But we are bringing cross-platformness to the cross-platform technology back again <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Sick. uh all right so um i suppose uh since you're working on this uh if people follow you on on twitter or x uh they can also follow the progress uh of this yes yes uh we will be we're basically building in public there uh me and machi you're gonna see tweets from us Yes, yes, and I'm following that. I'm 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 retweeting that, so uh, we will stay up to date. Um, but having that, I thank you very much, Tiago. It was a pleasure to discuss this. I'm very very excited on what you're gonna come up with in uh, upcoming weeks or months of your work. This is gonna be really cool to watch. Uh, you know, who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'll be able to jump on this bus at some point too. I would love to. Yeah, we, we would love your help or anyone's help. Yes, people, community. Let's let's work on this. Uh, thank you very much. Thank and you, Kuba. To everyone here, um, we're gonna leave Tiago's uh, in Twitter in the description of this episode. Uh, so go ahead and check it out. And if you're not subscribing us yet, but you are curious about this topic, hit the subscribe button because there will be more. And what else? Uh, have a great day or maybe evening. I don't know when you are watching this. Whatever time it is, have it great. And thank you very much. See you later. Cheers. Cheers.